I don't like when we throw the ball at the one. We throw an interception at the one. You know, luckily it went incomplete, and I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't going to let them continue to do that. Were you having that chat with Bevel or who were you? I was, I was letting Pete know. Oh, you were. Oh. Yeah, I was making sure Pete knew that we're not comfortable with you throwing the ball at the one. We've already seen how that goes. We've seen that. We've seen. That. I'm sure you guys have seen that play enough times. True story. Richard Sherman has never been one to mince words, and last night he didn't hold back either. After his team decided to throw on first and goal from the one, the same thing they did that cost them the Super Bowl. Stephen A., did Sherman cross the line? No, he did not. Oh. No, he did not. Um, I know it's not something that's popular. I know I get it. And I understand that you have to guard what you do publicly because you certainly don't want to show up a coordinator or a boss. But I remember when they lost the Super Bowl to the New England Patriots, Donovan, and one of the things that I came on the air the next day and said, I don't know if this team will ever recover from the residue, the stench of that emotion that that loss left behind. Because you got to remember what led to it. So here you are. You've got that great acrobatic catch by, Ker by Curse, okay? Curse. Right. And then after, prior to that, a couple of plays prior to that, you hit Marshawn Lynch beast mode down the left sideline. So then after the curse catch, what do you do? You give beast mode the ball. He runs four and a half yards down to the one yard line. Well, down to the half yard line. This is beast mode for Christ's sakes. And you call a pass play. I mean, you could debate whether or not Pete Carroll won it Beast mode, uh, Russell Wilson to be the star instead of beast mode. We could get into all of those things. I'm not going there. But what I am saying is that when you make a decision like that, that cost a team the Super Bowl championship, nothing's ever the same. But the players are still there. This is not a new team. The Legion of Boom, sans Earl Thomas, is still the Legion of Boom. They're all there. And they're like, wait a minute, we handling business, we hold it down the fort, and you gonna stick, you ain't learn from this? Come on, coach. All right. Come all right. on. All right, here now we I go. I ain't got no problem away. with that. Here I don't. We go. I don't have no problem with it. First of all, you, you want to go back to the Super Bowl. You did account for eight guys on the line of scrimmage, and that meant they were going all out blitzing man on the outside. You bring up Curse and the acrobatic catch that he made. If Curse would have been able to get off a of press coverage off of Browner to come inside of Butler, that would have been a walk in, in the end zone. It was actually a great play call by Daryl Am, I, am I hearing you? Am I hearing you correct? You're yeah, saying that yes. was a great call. That was a great from the half call. Yard line? Yes, that That's was a, a great horrible call. call. Because they went eight guys on the line of scrimmage. That meaning all out blitz. They were gonna clog up the like the gaps. And all you would have seen was they would have had to go to the next play. What Bill Belichick did to Pete Carroll in that sense is he played a mind control game on him. He was going to allow him to score because he felt like they couldn't stop their offense and Tom was going to drive down the score. Some of the same scenarios that he did against the Giants that it didn't work out well for him when he allowed them to score. This is the situation I have. I have a problem with Richard Sherman's comments because if you want to go back to that game and you want to watch the film against the Rams, how many guys were wide open, but Keenan and uh, Keenan and also Jared Goff just couldn't connect on them? Why don't we focus on that? Why is it that all of a sudden your third corner, your second and third corner, continue to get abused if you can't get the pass rush there? Focus on that. Now we know as the fans and former players who are now analysts on each TV show. We can talk about the lack of run game that you have. We can talk about the offensive line or how they struggle. Defensively, they haven't been the same pretty much as Earl Thomas went down, but you need to focus on your second and third quarter while they continue to get abused. Now, offensive line continues to struggle when they play against guys like we've seen with Michael Bennett back, Cliff Averill's playing well. Now you got Wagner and those guys getting to the quarterback. But yet still, for a defensive player, it's beyond you to focus on what the offense is doing. Tell me, we've seen that before. Yeah, well, we've seen guys you know, get big plays on your defense, too. Let the offense handle their business, and you handle your business on defense. No. I always have a problem when defensive players get into the media no, and talk about what they Donovan, did I'm or sorry. what they should have done. No, Donovan, leave that alone and keep it for in-house. You, you are one of the great and underrated quarterbacks uh, of all time. But you are wrong about this, and Stephen Absolutely A. Not. And it pains me to say it, Stephen A. is right about either, this Max. one. Don't He's right up. about this one. Here's the thing about Pete Carroll, in case you haven't noticed Donovan McNabb. The secret sauce on Seattle 
is that he allows his players to be themselves. And as a result, not only do they reciprocate loyalty, but they play loose and they play and they play free and they're able to optimize their ability. So that's one. And Richard Sherman is a part of that culture, one of the leaders of that culture, and it's had more success than any other culture in the NFC since Pete Carroll and Richard Sherman have been there. So that's one. Two, when you talk about running plays from, from, the, from goal line, basically, in big situations, it recalls an emotionally devastating moment for the team. Now, you may be right. I will... I will accept your representation uh, over any uh, over Stephen A's, for example, that it was an a- actually a good play call. I also disagree with you there, but you know a lot more about football than we do, so I will I will defer to you there. That's not even for the sake of this argument. That's not even the point. Technically, whether it was good or bad, it was right. an emotionally devastating moment that stuff like this harkens back to. So Richard Sherman is, fi- I'm not saying he's right or wrong, but he's fine bringing it up. He's on solid footing. And the fact that Pete Carroll has fostered an atmosphere where Richard Sherman feels free to bring that up is, part of the, is one of the keys to Seattle's success. I do not think Richard Sherman so- crossed the line at all. You're wrong, Donovan McNabb. So wait a minute. So if, Rich, if, if Russell Wilson comes out and say, we need to play press coverage on the outside because receivers are running wide open, are we going to say the same thing when Russell Wilson said, says that? No, we're going to say he needs to focus on what the offense is doing. Hold and then let's Hold get it. to the run game, why they should have ran the football. Did you see Rawls running the ball last night? Is he still hurt? What is the problem with the run game for Seattle? So what are you going to run? The old line? Got you, yard? They can't on, even get that. Hold on, Max. Donovan. Donovan, here's the point that you're missing. I would have a huge problem with Richard Sherman if Richard Sherman walked up to another player going off or went to the media or anybody else or was parading on the sideline going off at a player. Richard Sherman wasn't doing that. What Richard Sherman was doing was saying to the coaches, yo, we done saw it. We saw that before. It so cost us a Super Bowl media? championship. You know, why is I'm it in saying, the media? No, no, because they because he was answering the question because they saw right. him getting in their face on the sidelines. That's so he problem. was saying to them, we, what he was saying to them is, wait a minute, don't you dare do that to us again. Stop playing that, coach. Stop playing that. I don't have a problem with that. Come on. I don't have if, problem that's with the, that. if that's the case, Stephen A., then why did he go to Pete Carroll and say, why are we up three touchdowns and we running a fake punt? We got but, our kicker uh, killed. Well, that, that's our a set. That's a whole. Got killed. That, by the way, that's a whole separate issue. I agree Thank with you, you. there. That's but Pete, Ca- Pete Carroll was wrong about that. But now you're saying because so, Richard so, Sherman didn't hold his feet to the fire about something else, he, he shouldn't he say what's on his mind? wrong about that. What, how, was, how was Pete Carroll wrong for trying to throw the ball to Jimmy Graham, who was killing the, the Rams all day? Why, why a fake punt up yeah, three touchdowns? Three touchdowns. Down, the reason he went for Late the, in the game punt was because... It was the same opportunity that happened with the Rams as just the punter underthrew the receiver. That would have been another big play for the Rams. But then yeah, you yeah, run yeah, a fake yeah, punt. The- you run a fake punt when you have three touchdowns. That would Richard Sherman should have focused on. Of why are we doing this? But you know what? Let me, I want to answer that, Donovan. Right. I want to answer that. Because I think it's related to the Russell Wilson question you asked uh, before, rhetorically, I think. You know, if Russell Wilson says something, what would we say? Part of this is also based on what we know about the player, who they are. When guys are true to their own identities, and I think that's part of what, it's not that Pete Carroll fosters an atmosphere, yo, everyone pop off. It's Pete Carroll fosters an atmosphere where, where players feel comfortable being themselves, being individuals, and, it, and they come together as a team. Russell Wilson is not the popping off type. If he were to do that, we would scratch our heads a little because we'd say, wait a minute, that's out of character for him. But it's but, in character <laughs> for, 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 uh, for Richard Sherman, and the fact that he's allowed to be himself is part of their success. And that's the problem, Max. That's the whole problem. When guys sit there and they feel free because that they're comfortable with speaking out, that begins to separate locker rooms. When they're on the sideline arguing as a defense, who had to break it up? Yes, it was Cam Chancellor who had to break it up and try to bring everybody together. When you continue to express how you feel through the media, now other guys have to answer the question, and now that separates the locker room. They seem to be doing pretty good. That's fair. They that, seem to be doing on, pretty on, good. Max. Winning cures everything. Hold on, Max. Hold Winning on. cures everything. That's fair, Donovan. That's fair. But here's the macro perspective in it all. We are the number two seed. We might end up being the number two seed 
in the NFC. We are in position to possibly get to another Super Bowl. Don't right. try the same nonsense. Don't do that to us this time. I told you this was going to come back. You can call that a great call all you want to. My issue with that Super Bowl call, Donovan, was his willingness to throw it right over the middle. How come you can't throw it to the corner of the end zone or something where the risk is minimal in terms of a potential turnover? That's just common sense the and middle intelligence. The was wide open, so if you're today. Excuse, excuse me, evidently it was not. Yeah, <laughs> evidently it was not. Inside. Kirk's got jammed up by Browner. He's supposed to come inside the shield. Well, well then it wasn't and wide open, walk Donovan. The end zone. It, the, Donovan, it wasn't wide yeah, open that's because the risk. he got jammed up by Butler. That's the point. Then it's on you first. Don't it's not chance. on Russell Wilson. For, well, listen, listen. I'm not saying Russell Wilson. I said Pete Carroll in the call. That's why Richard Sherman said what he said. Watch that call. Don't be playing these games at the one-yard line. Run the damn Donovan, ball. So how do you let Stephen A. You? do you like that in a football co topic? Come on, B. Unbelievable. You know, Stephen A. always try to, he try to raise his voice and then his hairline come backwards a little bit. I can jump you. on you too, Stephen A. I don't know, Donovan. It sounds like he got you there. Uh, no, Max, you got me. See, you Max, got me there. Well, Max, listen, you I'm jump 50. Aside. See, I'm that's 50. what I'm talking about. What's you jump your size, Max. I'm, I'm, I'm 50 years. I'm almost 50 years old. What's your excuse? What's your and LeBron's excuse? Hey, hey, I'm holding on like in Vogue, Stephen. They holding on like in Vogue. <laughs> Speaking of getting closer to the Super Bowl, the Seahawks I know what you're talking about. clinched their <laughs> NFC uh, West title last night. This was the fourth time under Pete Carroll. Not too shabby. Donovan, always fun having you. We'll see you on Monday. Thank you for having me. I look forward to it. Coming Steven up next. Hayden. You are so disrespectful. He is going to fall off a cliff. Shut the hell up. That's not even close to my best. They're wrong. And I don't give a damn that they agree with me or not. It's that time of the show. This is where Stephen A. gives us his final words and the final take of the week. Stephen A., the floor is yours. Thank you, Molly. You know, when we learned yesterday that Craig Sager was gone from us all, obviously our hearts ached for his family, his friends, his loved ones. And we thought about the NBA community because obviously as a sideline reporter for TNT, uh, he did such a phenomenal job dating back to as early as 1981. We think about that and we thought about the NBA community, but what I think that on a day like today, we also need to think about is the sports world overall and how much he's impacted us all, but not just him. When I thought about Greg Sager, Craig Sager passing away, I also thought about my man, Stuart Scott, who passed away in January of 2015 at the age of 49. I thought about John Saunders. No, he did not pass away from cancer but he's gone from us nonetheless at age 61. I'm thinking about guys that were fixtures in the world of sports that had such a profound impact on the lives that they touched because of how enthusiastic they were about doing their job, how enthusiastic they were about living life, and how often they employed so many people that they ran across to do just the same, to never take life for granted, to treat each day uh, with the grace, with the desire, with the gratitude that it deserves, understanding that life isn't promised to any of us, and neither is obviously tomorrow. And when we think about a guy like Craig Sager, he reminded me of Stuart Scott. He reminded me of John Saunders. He reminded me of Jimmy Valvano and all the other iconic figures I believe to be iconic figures in the world of sports who lived a life covering games but treated life just the same understanding that as precious as it was, it's also there to be appreciated and enjoyed. And now that we think about Craig Sager's past, and let's remember that more so than anything else, he's special to us all. He meant so much to us all because of how often he reminded us of how precious life is and how it would be a shame for us not to feel about life the same way that he did.